Okay. Good evening and welcome to the City of Topeka Planning Commission meeting. We are a commission appointed by the mayor and city council to plan for the orderly growth and development of the community, to hold public hearings and to make recommendations to the city council on planning items. Please note the city council rules state the public hearings for planning cases shall be conducted solely by the planning commission. No additional public hearings will be conducted by the city council. Tonight's cases are tentatively scheduled to be heard by the city council next month. Agendas can be found at Topeka.org. For cases that require public hearings, the procedure will be as follows. First, the planning department staff will summarize the case. Next, we'll hear from the applicant or the representative. Then we'll receive public testimony. Public comments should be addressed solely to the chair and are limited to four minutes. Chris, please take the roll. Okay, Mr. Dean. Here. Mr. Freed. Here. Ms. Heron. I know I saw you somewhere. Ms. Heron. I think, she, I think she's having technical issues. Okay, I'll counter present and move on. Mr. Kennard. Here. Mr. Kelp. Here. Ms. Messina. Here. Ms. Pearson. Okay. And Mr. Tababin. Here. And Mr. Warner. Here. We do have nine for a quorum. Thank you, Chris. Um, first, agenda. Uh, do we have any um, uh, any conflicts of interest or? Any conflicts? So this Commissioner can are we skipping the minutes? I don't have my my schedule up. I, I thought that came second, but I um, I just I actually have a conflict on this one, so I can okay. give it now or then. Okay, let's start with the conflicts of interest or no nope, no problem. Um Actually, on uh, on the first case involving Daniel and Jennifer Manis, I do uh, patronize their business, and the most recent car that I sold was to them. I don't see any reason that it should interfere um, with my judgment on the case, but it should be disclosed. Okay, thank you. Are there any other conflicts of interest? If in not any more, how about um, let's go on to approval of minutes. This is Commissioner Messina. I would make a motion to approve the minutes. Thank you. Is there a second? Commissioner Kanar, there is. All right, it's been moved and seconded. Chris, will you please take the vote? Okay, and I will, Commissioner Pearson, you are muted. I saw you, I saw you talking, but we couldn't hear you. Okay, we're gonna start from the bottom up. Mr. Warner? Aye. Mr. Tabalbin? Uh, I think I'll abstain since I wasn't at the last meeting. Okay, Ms. Pearson? Okay, Ms. Messina? Aye. Mr. Kelp? Aye. Mr. Kennar? Aye. Ms. Heron? Aye. Mr. Freed? Aye. And Mr. Dean? Aye. And Ms. Pearson, no, I couldn't hear you, but I saw your lips move, and I think you said aye, right? Okay, motion passes 8-0 with one abstaining. Thank you, Chris. Yeah. Um, Mr. Chair, can I just make sure Commissioner Pearson, I, I, I haven't heard her <laughs> when she's tried to speak. Um, 
do you know that you're, is anybody else not hearing Commissioner Pearson? So I, so I just, yes, we're not hearing you. I, I don't know if it's something you need to log, log out and log back in, but I just wanted you to know that. We're not, we're not hearing you. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Okay. We may want to give her um, a moment. <clears throat> Um, tonight, uh, Mr. Chair, I, I can kind of help facilitate. I know there, the items don't, I don't look, um, uh, yeah, there's no staff attached to these presentations. So, um, you can defer to me and I'll, I'll point you in the right direction as to who's presenting. Okay. So. We'll give her a few minutes to pop on here. I see her name. Oh. Commissioner Pearson, uh, are you able to hear us, hear me? I can hear you, can you hear oh, me? Yes, there you are. all right. Okay, awesome. it, it worked. Awesome. All right, we're good to go. Okay, so it looks like the First up is the rezoning of 1911 South Kansas Avenue. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Uh, Vice Chair. Um, we are proud to present uh, Mr. Will Sharp tonight as a newly minted planner uh, with the department. Um, this is his. Uh, this is his case. Uh, technically, Will will be truly minted when he graduates in May. But for now, uh, he is he's helping us out here until then, uh, part time. And so, uh, wanted to present him tonight, and uh, we'll uh, we'll uh, help help him with anything that that uh, you guys need. So, Will, you want to take it away? Uh, yeah. Thanks, Bill. Uh, let me share my screen. A moment. Well, <clears throat> while you're pulling that up, I'll just yeah. let people know because uh, I'll get asked this. Yes, Will will be a master's graduate from KU, if you are wondering. Yes. Uh, and a proud, proud, uh, uh, um, proud citizen of Baldwin City originally. So, yes. I think I've given right. every every one of your yeah secrets away now, Will. So go ahead. <laughs> that's, that's right. Okay. Um, okay. Uh, am I? You're, are you seeing the notes screen? Yes. yes. Okay. Um, swap. Not like I've done okay. Yeah. Um, one moment. Yeah, you just go ahead and swap the display setting up there. Can I? Nope. One second. Share and then choose this one. 
Oh, okay. Is it still on the note screen? There we go. Okay. Okay. Um, all right. Uh, yeah, so this is uh, Z22 slash 03 uh, zoning case by uh, Daniel and Jennifer Manis. Uh, so uh, the site is located at 1911 South Kansas Avenue. Uh, it's approximately 0.17 acres. Uh, they are requesting the change to current zoning from M1 two-family dwelling to C4 commercial, and they would like to develop this site as a tow lot. So as we can see on the zoning map, uh, the area is surrounded by M1 C4 and I1 zoning. The immediate surrounding area is characterized by current developed land that includes a small number of businesses and residences. Uh, an auto repair shop owned by Daniel and Jennifer Manis is located directly uh, to the north of the parcel. Directly to the south is a single family residence. Uh, to the east, there are a number of res residences lining South Kansas Avenue. And uh, Kansas Avenue along here is considered a busy minor arterial street. Uh, the projected, the future land use for the property is de designated as mixed use per the land use and growth management plan. And here we have a FEMA flood map of the area. The property is entirely located inside a FEMA floodway. Uh, this limits most commercial and residential development. So a construction of a tow lot is one of the only acceptable uh, land uses for the area. So based on uh, the above findings and analysis from planning staff, uh, we recommend approval of the request for rezoning from M1 two-family dwelling district to C4. Uh, there are any questions? Are there any questions from the commissioners for staff? If none, let's we'll move on to the applicant presentation. Is there anybody representing the property from the applicant tonight? That would be me, Daniel Manus. Hello. Uh, do you have anything to, I guess, to, to add to this or are you? Um, not that I, questions? Not really, no. Okay. Are there any questions for the applicant by the commissioners? Okay, if none, then we'll move on to, thank you, Daniel. We'll move on to public testimony. You have four minutes to speak on the issue. Um, is there anybody from the public who would like to speak on this case? I don't think I see any public. If not, that will close the public hearing. Um, let's move on to discussion by commissioners. Does anyone want to have any questions, want to speak on this issue? Mr. Chairman? Yes, Mr. Kopp. Are you ready for a motion? I am ready for a motion. Mr. Chairman, I would move approval of the proposed rezoning from M1 to C4, consistent with the staff report and recommendation. Thank you, Mr. Culp. Is there a second? I would second the motion. Thank you. It's been moved and second. Is there any discussion on the motion? If not, uh, Chris, would you mind taking the vote, please? Okay, Mr. Dean. Aye. Mr. Freed? 
Aye. Ms. Heron? Aye. Mr. Kanar? Aye. Mr. Kelp? Aye. Ms. Messina? Aye. Ms. Pearson? Aye. Mr. Tobobin? Aye. And Mr. Warner? Aye. Motion passes 9-0. All right, thank you. We'll move on to our next case, PUD 22-01 TLC Pet Nursing Hotel. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, this item will be presented by Dan Warner. So Dan, it's all yours. All right, thank you, Bill. Oops, wrong one. <laughs> Okay, one second. Okay, sorry. Okay, the requested zoning for PUD 2201 is to rezone from C2 commercial to PUD plan unit development district with C2 commercial uses plus a pet nursing hotel with an outdoor area for training and medical support of pets on the property located at 2500 Southwest 17th Street. So the subject property is located at the Northwest corner of Southwest 17th Street and Southwest High Avenue and within a commercial area. Uh, the PUD is uh, proposed to allow an outdoor enclosure of animals and aspects of animal care allowed in C4, but not in C2 zoning. Staff is recommending approval of the PUD zoning subject to the conditions listed in the staff report. I have a few images I'm gonna buzz through uh, next. So this is looking Southwest from the Northeast corner of the property. Uh, it's this area uh, near uh, this, uh, what's this horizontal siding, not the brick. So this is this area. Uh, where the outdoor area will be on the kind of north edge of the property. This is looking northwest from the southeast corner of the property and looking north from across 17th Street. So the applicant has provided an updated Exhibit A, so this is a little different than what's in the staff report. Uh, so this site plan, con conceptual site plan, shows the proposed outdoor area and some landscaping. Um, I will note that use of the outdoor area for training, care, and play is restricted to the hours of 7 a.m. and 8 to 8 p.m. Uh, that is one of the conditions of approval. Conditions, conditions of appro approval note the outdoor area is limited to, to no more than 550 square feet. Um, it will be enclosed with a vinyl privacy fence. And you can see what that fence looks like on the rendering on the right set, right hand side of that slide. So the property is located on the east end of a commercial area along 17th Street, which is an arterial road. C2 is an appropriate land use transition from an arterial road to a residential area. Um, so the use is consistent with the designation future land use map is strip commercial. Uh, it's a designation in our land use and growth management plan. So staff report acknowledges there's potential for negative effect on residential property to the north. So we have a number of PUD conditions that require mitigation, such as shrubs, fencing, setbacks, restricted hours of outdoor operation, and sound insulating materials. Um, I will note with the initial design and remodel of the building, methods were used to absorb some of the noise produced inside the building and keep it from being transmitted outside. Uh, you can see some of those methods that are listed on page three of the staff report. This is an updated exhibit B, and this shows again the outdoor area, but also um, kind of focuses in on the landscaping that's being proposed uh, to help mitigate uh, the sound there. With that, commissioners, uh, we will be happy to try to answer questions. Thank you. 
Mr. Warner. Uh, is there anybody present from the applicant or the applicant? Yes, this is uh, Leslie Florange. I am the applicant. Okay, welcome. Thank you. Commissioners, do you, are there any questions for the applicant? Seeing none. I, I do have one. Yes. Um, Ms. Um, Florange, we received an email that the neighbor to the north was uh, still complaining of sound from the dogs. Has, have you had any communication from the neighbor regarding that? Um, so just wondering who's speaking. Is that Mark? I don't see anyone. That, that was Commissioner Freed. Yes, Mark. Yes. yes. Okay. I didn't see a picture. Um, yeah. So um, that neighbor um, is uh, someone that has been um, a bit problematic since we opened the facility. Um, he lets his dogs out unleashed onto our property. And we have older dogs and sick dogs in many cases, and it scares our animals as we walk them outside of our building. And so I went over to his home and I told him that if he didn't stop doing that, I would report him to the city, which subsequently I did. And I think that started some, um, you know, uh, unfortunate discourse. Um, and so consequently, uh, he then reported that there was noise and the city came out and um, toured our facility and came back. And that's also in the um, documents that Mr. Warner has, that there was no uh, sound that was uh, disruptive to the neighborhood. Uh, that neighbor also says that our dogs keep him up at night. Um, I wish that were true. That would mean that my hotel was full uh, every single night. Uh, it is not. And um, we have older pets at 11, 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock, 9 o'clock. They're dead asleep. So there's no noise that we're emanating from there. So um, I think this is, uh, you know, just uh, some discourse that he wishes to put out there. Um, it's unfortunate. But the rest of the neighborhood has um, welcomed us with open arms. Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Yes, Ms. Uh, Commissioner Culp. Uh, Ma'am, could I just ask a couple questions? I may have missed it in the staff report, but sure. is there is there some existing fencing uh, between your property and, and the neighbor who has raised the objections? Yes, there is fencing there. Is, is and that, that a, was that was that existing fence? fencing. It is. It's uh it's about six or seven feet tall. Um, and uh, it's wood, and uh, it's there really uh, to uh, that. I guess he put it there uh, for his dogs uh, that he lets out uh, every morning and every night. It's the neighbor's fence. You know, we don't really. I asked him one time whose fence it was, and he didn't seem to know who put it up. Whether it was, you know, we had that was a home, and then it was a beauty salon, and now it's TLC. So I'm not sure who put it up. And he said when I asked him uh, many, you know, back in 2018, whose fence it was, he didn't know. But it is there, and um, it separates us. Yeah. One other question, ma'am. The, uh, yes. the, the, uh, the among the conditions that the staff is proposing, uh, you have both fen fencing and screening. Um, I, I, again, I may have missed it in the staff report, but is the uh -huh. uh, is the fencing that you were, uh, and I assume you're willing to to comply with those conditions. But if so, is the fencing is it going to be of a solid density or? or yes, it's, density? It, it's a solid PVC fence. Okay, and it runs the full length of uh, of the property that's going to be the outdoor exercise area. Is that right? Abs yes, that is correct. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Are there any other questions from commissioners to the applicant? Okay. If none, we'll move on to public testimony. Questions for the public to the commissioners. Um, again, you have four minutes to speak. If you'd like to speak on this issue, are there any 
Anybody from the public wishing to speak on this issue? This is Tyler Jaggers. Yes. You have um, uh, four minutes. So animals are really important for a city that's growing. And with all the um, influx of uh, people purchasing homes, we need uh, support for those animals, especially as they grow older. Thank you. Are there any other members of the public that would like to speak on this issue? If not, we'll close the public testimony and uh, have a discussion by commissioners. Um, this is Commissioner Heron, and I just kind of want to provide some thoughts. I live in the College Hill area, um, and I work by walk by this facility frequently with my son. It's always well maintained, um, and just from what I've seen, um, they've provided excellent care to pets in that facility. And I think it's just amazing that they're extending their offering. Um, and I think this is great for the city of Topeka. Thank you, Mr. Chair. There's also a comment in the there's comment in the chat. Yes. <clears throat> yeah, Mr. Chair, um, that's <clears throat> want to make two two quick comments. Yes, there is a comment from the public in the chat. Um, okay. Are we? Is Mr. Uh, Jaggers still there? If if yes, are you Mr. are you able to identify? We we typically like to ask uh, where um, your your address uh, and are you within the neighborhood or just give I, the I live in Harrison Street. Okay. Like Harrison uh, and third. Okay. Okay. Thank you. We just, we like to have the commissioners have some context of who is speaking. And I'll just, for the, for the record on the chat, uh, Susan Maxson lives, I live near TLC and approve of this. So that was a chat message in there. Uh, any other comments by commissioners? And if not, I would entertain a motion. Commissioner Kennar, uh, based on the findings and recommendations in the staff report, I would move for uh, approval. Thank you, Commissioner Kennar. Do I hear a second? Demetrius Heron, and I second. Thank you. It's been moved and seconded. Any discussion about the motion by the commissioners? Just, Mr. Chairman. Yes, Mr. Cole. Just, just for the record, that the motion, the motion is second. Include the uh, conditions set out in the staff report. Is that correct? That is correct, Mr. Cobb. Okay, thank you. And Commissioner Heron, is your second still good? Yes, I was seconded the way that it was proposed originally. Um, with that, any no discussion, we'll move it to a vote. Chris, would you take the vote, please? Okay, roll, calling roll from bottom up. Mr. Warner? Aye. Mr. Tabobin? Aye. Ms. Pearson? Aye. Ms. Messina? Aye. Mr. Kelp? Aye. Mr. Kanar? Aye. Ms. Heron? Aye. Mr. Freed? Aye. And Mr. Dean? Aye. Motion passes 9 0. Thank you. Moving on to the next. Item Z, what's that? Oh, yep. Z22 01 downtown D 2 rezoning by Topeka Planning Commission. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, we're going to have our planner two, neighborhood planner Bryson Risley, present tonight. Um, as a reminder, this was initially. Uh, initially initiated by the Planning Commission uh, last year. We we presented 
all three districts. Uh, and if and if I have that, if I don't have that right, let me know, Dan. But I'm pretty sure we had all of them initiated at the time. So this is a follow up. This is kind of phase two of the downtown uh, rezoning implementation. Uh, probably within the next. Uh, month or two, you will end up seeing a D3. So uh, this is D2. Mr. Uh, Risley, the floor is yours if you're ready. Yes. Give me one second here and I will get this shared. Can everybody see that? Yes. Uh, good evening, commissioners. Uh, this is, again, as Bill stated, this was initiated back in November. This is D2, um, so we will go ahead and get started. Uh, some background on this. So we have held several meetings throughout this process to make sure um, individuals are aware of what's going on in this area. Uh, specifically, we've had three different notifications to the property owners, as well as a neighborhood information meeting. Um, the neighborhood information meeting goes out to individuals who are 300 feet away from the properties being rezoned. This map shows 200, so that boundary is actually a little bit larger for that neighborhood information meeting. Um, additionally, uh, we have 57 properties that are being proposed for D2. Um, that makes up 15.4 acres. Uh, the general boundaries of this area are Southwest Topeka Boulevard to the west, Southwest Fifth Street to the south, a half block east of Van Buren Street to the east and 2nd Street to the north. Uh, with this zoning change, there is no proposed change in uses at this time and existing land uses will be allowed to remain uh, per TMC 18.50.040. Um, but this, journey, this zoning change will actually bring five properties that were currently non-conforming into conformance uh, and there will be two properties that will be non-conforming with this zoning change. Um, <clears throat> the properties be rezoned are M3 multiple family, C4 commercial, and ONI2 office and institutional. Um, this is generally the properties that surround are of the same category with some D1 that we has recently been changed uh, pretty much to the south. Um, there's still some existing M3 that you'll see along Harrison. And then there's also some I-1 to the north and east of this as well. Uh, alignment with the uh, land use and growth management plan. Um, this does align, as you can see here, the majority of this area was identified for downtown. There's additionally some institutional there as well. Um, that is actually the utility site for institutional. So that is not as much of a key factor in this, but the downtown does align with the land use and growth management plan and staff recommends approval of D2 downtown zoning. And that concludes my presentations. I would take any questions. Any questions by the commissioners? Is this a typical uh, question to me on the uh, nuts and bolts of this? Is this a good tr traditional one where you have public comment also? Yes. So, yes. We'll just go down the list. We'll move into uh, um, uh, uh, City of Topeka is obviously the applicant. So move on to uh, um, questions for the applicant by commissioners, assuming there would be not none. Uh, move on to public testimony. Is there anybody from the public wishes to speak? speak? Yeah, Tyler Jaggers. Okay. Um, which properties are non-conforming? The two properties that will be non-conforming, give me one second here. There is a seat, there's a uh, billboard sign that is C4 commercial and give me one second here and I will get the screen shared and I apologize. I will have the staff report that lists those as well. The two non-conforming. I apologize for the dead air. 
400 Southwest Van Buren Street is an automotive rental currently. And then on the Southwest corner of 2nd and Van Buren, there's a billboard sign. And those are the two properties that would be non-conforming with the D2 change. Got it. Uh, Bryson, if I, if I may, I don't know if everybody uh, remembers the, the difference between D1, D2, D3, but, but basically the D2 is going to be more of our residential downtown mixed use. So there is be a little more emphasis on neighborhood uh, residential and scale, uh, still some non-residential use is allowed, but primarily trying to uh, uh, accommodate a, 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 a medium type uh, density, uh, if you will, in the downtown area for residential with some uh, mixed use allowed. That is different from the D1, where the D1 was more primarily uh, he heavy mix, mixed use, heavy, heavier on the commercial uh, side of things, and it allowed residential uh, as part of that. This is, this is more residential emphasis. And Bill, if I may build off that, uh, the non-conforming are generally going to be, there's one that is a mixed use that is allowed under D2. The other four are residential, whether it's single family or converted to apartments that were not allowed under their current uh, C4 and ONI2 that will become conforming with a D2 zoning change. Thanks, Bryce. Thank are there any other members of the public who'd like to speak on this issue? If not, um, check my chat. If not, we'll close the public hearing portion and have a discussion by commissioners. Anybody want to speak to this case? Yes, Chairman. Yes, Mr. Cop. Uh, if I could ask Bryce a question, going back to the non conforming properties. Um, and those non-conforming uses, structures, or lots? Um, so the, the use is what is not conforming, if I'm understanding the question correctly. So one of them is an automotive rental. Uh, that is not, so since that kind of falls under the more commercial, that is not an allowed use in D2 where we're focusing on residential. The other is the billboard sign that's currently zone C4. It abuts um, I-70 currently. Um, and so that's also the use on the site as well. Okay, I, I may have misheard you, but did you say there were uh, non-conforming lots that their current use is out of compliance? As, as far as lots, uh, I'm not aware of any non-conforming- no, Non-conforming uses. There- I, I think you, no, I, I, uh, Commissioner Cap, I think he was talking about current Four current non-conforming uses that will be brought into conformance if we change the zoning. Okay, is, is they it? would become conforming under the D1. D2. D2, yeah. Okay, yes. thank you. Good. Correct. Good. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Any other questions for staff? And if not, we'd be open to motions by commissioners. Mr. Chairman. Yes, Commissioner. Uh, Commissioner Free will, uh, based on the findings and analysis in the staff report, will move to recommend to the governing body approval the request to reclassify the property from M3 multiple family C4 commercial in ONI2 office to D2 downtown district. Thank you, Commissioner. Do we have a second? Second. Thank you, Commissioner Culp. It's been moved and seconded. Are there any discussions regarding the motion? Hearing none, Chris, would you please take the roll? Hey, Mr. Dean. Aye. Mr. Freed. Aye. Ms. Heron. Aye. Mr. Kennard. 
Aye. Mr. Cal. Aye. Ms. Messina. Aye. Ms. Pearson. Aye. Mr. Tobobin. Aye. And Mr. Warner. Aye. Motion passes 9-0. Thank you, Chris. Uh, looks like our next item is communications to the commission. Mr. Fiender. Thanks again, Mr. Chair. My only communication is since you didn't have any uh, cases go to the city council last from last month, we didn't have any. Um, you've already really received, which is we uh, are sorry to pass along that, that Mr. Hall, Mr. Michael G. Hall has uh, left our our uh, home here um, and moved on to greener pastures, as they say. Uh, so we, for the time being, you're going to have to um, put up with us uh, until we find some replacements. But between myself, Dan, uh, Will, as I mentioned, is Mr. Sharp is now part of the team. Um, we, we are still uh, a couple folks down, but never fear. Uh, we will uh, try to live up to, to those standards, but we really, uh, we really want to, I just want to say, even though he's not watching how much we, uh, um, admire, uh, Mr. Hall's work with us. Uh, he was, he was one of those, uh, kind of indispensable staff persons that, um, we're, I don't know how we'll try and fill in the interim until we fill those shoes, but, uh, we're, we're going to try and, uh, just, wanted you to be be aware um, you you get to live with us for you get to live with the with the bench uh for a few months <clears throat> Hopefully you're making that. dan feel really good <laughs> <laughs> ah, it's all good <laughs> <laughs> all right but that's all that's all i have mr chair thank you okay thank <clears throat> you if there's not any other uh anything by the Mr. commissioners. Mr. Chairman. Yes, Mr. Cole. Uh, could I just raise one point? Uh, as I appreciate the, the convenience of the Zoom meetings as much as anyone, but I'm wondering if there's any sentiment among the commissioners for returning to in-person meetings. I think the Zoom meetings are convenient, but they come at a price, I think. Um, and whether you had that discussion, if there's a desire to have a discussion tonight or, or ask staff for um, pros and cons of returning to to in-person meetings and discuss it next meeting or or drop it. I'm just I'm in favor of going to in-person meetings at this time. Thank you. Do we have any other um, comments regarding that from the, the commissioners? Any preferences or as Commissioner Freed, I would I would also prefer to go back to in person if that if that works for everybody. And along with that, I just want to thank everyone else for feigning their technical issues tonight, so I don't feel so bad. <laughs> so I, Commissioner Kinnar, I would tend to agree that there is something lost. Um, the Zoom meeting, and there would be a benefit to returning in person. Ms. Commissioner Pearson, though I agree with all the gentlemen, my preference is for a, a virtual meeting. It's a little bit more convenient for me. Bill, is this a, uh, is this their uh, city council's back into their chambers and their meetings? Is that right? They, they are, there's, they're still doing a hybrid where they have a couple council members uh, that um, participate by zoom. Um, I, 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 I don't know the the ins and outs of how that works. It, it clearly, when I go to the meetings, uh, there's clearly a need for technical staff to make that work. I don't think we could do that. Uh, I think we'd have to do one or the other. Um, 
and we 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 have the ability to go back. Um, it's it's one of those things where, in fact, I'm not even sure some of you probably have never been a done an in person <laughs> uh, meeting. But it's it's one of those things that every time we looked at going back, uh, we, you know, it's like every time you wash your car, it it, it rains, and so I uh, uh, had one of those those kind of curses come up um so hopefully by by wanting this uh out there uh something doesn't happen but we we certainly are prepared most yeah like i said council's doing it for the most part and um we have you, you know from time to time we we do have those technical issues um uh, but from a public standpoint uh, you've you've been you've been on these long enough to know what sort of public participation comes along with this. So if uh, if you want us to look into uh, the possibility of doing that, I certainly can talk to our facilities folks and make sure there, there's we need to have some. I think that's one where we need security in place, and so we we just have to ramp people back up. I don't think it's an issue. Uh, per se, but we just have to give them some notice. <laughs> okay, Mr. Chairman. Yes, Commissioner Clay. I, I brought the subject up, so I guess I'd ask Bill. It, it seems to me that the hybrid approach that you're talking about is, you know, if the city council can do it, it would certainly seem like that can be done for the planning commission. Uh, still allowing commissioners that prefer to do virtual meetings continue to do so and members of the public could either appear uh, at, on the Zoom or or in person. Can they not? It te yes, I, I, I'm saying it's it's technically possible, obviously, because council does it. What I, what maybe I didn't uh, say is that requires staff. And I, that's something we have to, and that's not me. <laughs> uh, that's not the, the channel four folks. Um, that's other staff that we would have to then uh, bring to our meetings and make sure that that is working the way it's supposed to work. Because believe me, uh, there are still technical issues with the hybrid approach as well. Well, Mr. Chairman, could we just ask Bill to run the traps, identify the pros and cons and report to us at the, at the uh, April meeting? Is that, <clears throat> excuse me, would that be okay? Uh, all right, Bill? <clears throat> yes, so asked. I am, I will check into it and, and report back. Excuse me. Okay. Okay, Bill, thank you. Thank you. Are there any other comments, questions by the commission? Commissioners? If not, we are adjourned. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Have a good Bye. night.